surrender. There is one deva in particular who is very dear to Durga Mata. I wonder how many of us know. If we do not, then tonight in our prayers, in this beautiful song that we are going to sing in 40 verses, then you will know who I speak of. Whenever his names are sung, Durga Devi's present is there. You can feel her vibrations when his puja is done. And when her puja is done, it cannot be completed until his puja is also done. Shri Guru Chandra Salo
Prince Uru Shri Mahavir Swami Ki 
as we join together in the chanting of the Gayatri Mantra. Remember three times you recited? The first time, everybody who is happy, whether you're celebrating birthday, you're celebrating anniversaries, you're celebrating a promotion in your job, you recently passed an exam, you bought a new car, whatever good things have happened in your life, the first Gayatri Mantra is for all of our devotees who have enjoyed something special and unique. The second time, we pray, we ask God that those who are sick, may God give them the speedy recovery, the healing power that they so much need. Those who have passed away, who have left this world for whatever reasons, today we also pray, may those souls be happy wherever they are. And the third time, we pray for all religion, all culture, all denominations, all faith, all people across the globe, every creation, may everyone be in peace. Om Mangalam Kum 
sampati vardan ro fisiento vas sukan sampati happiness prosperity progress good things in our life das jan kar today we surrender to you oh mother as your servants your devotees because we depend on you this is our prayers this is our puja this is our service for tonight boliye prem solo aadhi shakti jagadambhi mata ki jai dear devotees once again we pranam to all of you thank you so much for joining us and joining in our havan our prayers and it is my honor now to hand over to the dharvas these beautiful singers and musicians tonight to sing for us for the next 15 minutes or so and then after that we will get the opportunity to sit and listen to our vidyas for tonight who is no other than our very own pandit satish ji over now to the pandit sir
The Lord paved the path through our intellect, through our physical strength, our belief in ourselves. And what happened? We were able to traverse the path of Sanatan Vedi Dharma. This is what is called Dharma. And man's karma is to build his Dharma. And man's Dharma should be one's karma. And the more good you do, is the more dharmic we will become, more divine we will become in the world. The first night when we began this beautiful yatra, we started to look at Ma, the powers, the blessings of our earthly mothers. Remember the, 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 the one line? Nardi pe rupa ma bapaka. You cannot neglect such a divine mother and go to the universal mother. So we have to respect, love, and honor our earthly mothers. The second night, Pandit Prabhudeva Sharma taught us about Sudarshan from the Devi Bhagavatam and his relationship with his mother, how his mother sacrificed so much for the welfare of her child. The third night, those of you who watched and witnessed, you would have heard Pandit Yogananda where he looked at the Devi Bhagavatam, he looked at verses of the Durga Devi Chalisa, and he started to talk about who is God, what is God. We have to go beyond and search for this energy, this power. Those of you who were with us last night heard our young, vibrant, upcoming Pandit in our community, Pandit Yogendra, Pandit Yogiji, where he was looking at the Devi Bhagavatam, where he looked at that beautiful story, the conversation between who's that energy? Narad Muni and Sri Ram and Lakshmana also was there. And they were talking about what? The abduction of Sitama. When we have lost this divinity, we have to search long and hard to find it. Tonight with us is no stranger to this Mandir to our community. As a matter of fact, this is Miniva. <laughs> he lives right across the, the, the next street from me. We pass each other sometimes, we don't even, we are so fast, we are so busy, we don't even stop and sometimes we don't even get to say hello or sit around. But this is how life is, eh? And when we do meet, we meet in satsang. It is no other than our the very own Pandit Satesh Deo. I want you to sit back, relax, let your mind go. Where? To the divine teachings of the Universal Devi. It is my respect, my honor, my privilege to hand over to Vedyas for tonight, Pandit Satish Deo. Prince Olo, Vedyas Maharaj Ki. Saraswati 
Uh, as you may have heard before in Sanat and Dharma, we don't really believe in that because mothers should be respected at all times. But if we had to say that we have a special day for mother, we have two Navratri, Chaitra Navratri that, that we're in now, and then Sharada Navratri, the fall Navratri, the fall season. But also, there are two Gupta Navratri. Gupta means like secretive, like, you know, kept uh, very low key. One comes in the winter, the heart of winter, one comes in the summer. So actually there are four Navratri in total throughout the whole year. So four multiplied by nine, I think is 36. So over a month to put it together, the Western Canada had one day for Mother's Day. We have a whole month when you add up all the days together. More than a month, actually. That is the greatness of this great dharma that we belong to. Before I go into the main body of Katha, I would just like to sing the praises of the Divine Mother. I will not do it as well as everyone else here has done, and everyone has done a wonderful job of, of singing the praises of that glorious, supreme, universal Mother. But still, to get my own mind in the frame as well, I would like to just sing a couple of lines in, in praise. She is referred to as Jagad Uthari here. Jagat means a universe. Uthari means that which sustains. So she sustains every atom of, of, of creation. So in that capacity, we, we pray to her. Jagadotharini Mata Purga Jagadotharini Oh, 
Actually, we divide Navaratri into three parts. So it's nine is the basis of Navaratri. Navaratri, we all know what that means. And by tradition, we dedicate the first three nights to Durgama, the next three to Lakshima, and the last three to Saraswati Ma. And the question is often asked, what is the authority for doing it this way? Well, I will not say there is no authority, but I will say that I have not come across one myself as yet to verify that this is definitely the case. But if you look in the Panchan, which is the astrological chart for the year, we see in the Sharad Navaratri, which is the fall Navaratri, actually that is a mean one. The last three days are dedicated to Ma Saraswati. The first of those, um, the seventh day then, is called Saraswati Awahan. The eighth day is called Saraswati Puja. And the ninth day is called Saraswati Visarjan. So that is listed there. And that is how this thing come about, that the last three days are for Saraswati Ma. So really, that is for the Sharad Navaratri. But we can apply to this Navaratri too, that, that there's no problem with that. And then, today, is a special day called Lakshmi Panchmi. That's today. Lakshmi Panchmi. If you look in the Panchan again, you will see it is listed there as today is called Lakshmi Panchmi. Now, we are in the fifth, it is five days now. Now, Ratri started Monday, so it is five days. But you know something? This, when the sun rose this morning, the moon was still in its fourth phase only. And that is why today is technically classed as Chaturthi. It is still, we are still in the fourth phase of the moon for Navratri. And that is how Navratri sometimes ends up stretching over to 10 days. Because one phase of the moon can last for two days. And that's how you end up with the extra day sometimes. And then that happened again. So that, 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 that is just an attempt to clear up any confusion about that. But you know, the sun rose in the fourth phase, but now, by this time of the day, now we are, the moon is now in its fifth phase now. And this is called Panchmi. We know how no Panch is five. And Lakshmi Panchmi. It means that this is classified as a new year. You know, the first day of Navratri is Chaitra Navratri. Chaitra is the first month of the year in our calendar. So the first day of Navratri is a new year. So as well as we know about Diwali or Dipavali, that is a main day. For the whole year, that is a big day that we dedicate to Mahalakshmi Ma. And all the businesses, uh, you know, people who are in, in pursuit of wealth, we, we all have to be in some way or another. They, they will open a, a new book. But today also is an auspicious day to, you know, open a new financial book if, if, if you have one. Lakshmi Panchi. That is what and today is all about. So that is why in my opening Pratna, I had dedicated some to uh, Durgama and also to, to Saraswati Ma because you know she is important as well. But last of all, Lakshmi Ma because we are focusing on her. Does that mean we forget about Durga and Saraswati Ma? Well, this daughter will throw some light on that matter. So that is 
described the nine forms of Guru Dhamma. Pratama is Shaila Putri, Shaila Putri is the first one, Dutiya Brahmachari, Tritiyam Chandra Ghandi. So Shaila Putri, Brahmachari, Chandra Ghandi is the third one. Kushmana is the fourth one. And I, I wouldn't um, go into the rest right now. But it means that each day of Navratri is dedicated to a different form of Durlama. So that means although we are focusing on Lakshmi Ma, you must not forget Durlama and Ma also. It doesn't mean that we neglect the other forms of the Divine Mother, just means we focus on one in, in particular. So the, the verses from the Devi Bhagavatam, which I will choose to read today, will focus upon the greatness of Mahalakshmi Ma. And you will recall from the beginning, a few moments ago, I read Om Sharim Harim Sharim Kamale Kamalalaye Prasida Prasida Om Sharim Harim Sharim Mahalakshmi Namaha This is what you call a Bija Mantra. The sound Om Sharim Harim Sharim these are syllables which generate certain types of Shakti, certain types of energy which make us feel the presence of Mahalakshmi Mahama. There is a word in there, Kamal, Kamala. That is important. What is Kamala or Kamal? Well, if, I, if I ask what is Kamal, what is that? We all know that it's a lotus flower. The same plant that produces the, 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 the purine leaf, that lotus flower. That is the seat of Mahalakshmi Mahama. That is what she is said to us from her from. What is the significance of the lotus flower? It come, you, you know, it grows in the trench or, or whatever body of water there is. And at the bottom there is mud. It is murky. And it comes up through that water. And then eventually it comes up through the top into the clear air. So it comes from the, the, the mud through the murky water up into the air, which is clear. That is how we are. That mud represents this samsara, the material existence that we are all trapped in. And we have to try and rise above that and become, you know, get to know ourselves, the Atma, which is the true self. This body, it represents all that work inside the body. We have to disassociate ourselves with this and get to know the real self, who we really are. And that is what Mahalat Shima is demonstrating by making this Kamal uh, flower her seat. So when, when, we, when we see Lakshmi Ma sitting there, that is what we should be reminded of. That when we pray to her, she will help us to rise above this material existence which is holding us all back. We are all being held back. So long as we are steeped in this materialism, then we are all being held back. I am trapped in it. I, I dare say most of us are as well. And Lakshima is the one who will help us to rise up, just as our lotus flower does, get to all of that, and emerge victorious on top. Let me now go into the verses of Devi Bhagavatam. Oh! 
to invoke our presence. Once we practice dharma in whatever way we know, all these different, different examples we have, if we can do one of them only, then that will assure the presence of Mahalakshmi Ma in, uh, in our lives. Now, I will now read the, the next shloka, which will elaborate a bit further on the glories of Mahalakshmi Ma. This ocean of milk is where 
Jewish school constantly resides. That is from the Ramayan. We all would, have, uh, be, would be familiar with it from the Ramayan Sumira. That upon the coils of Shishnad, Lord Vishnu lies there, and Mahalakshmi Ma is at his feet, and they float upon that ocean of milk. Now, what did Lord Vishnu tell Lakshmi Ma now? He told her that the time has come. This is, this is in the beginning of creation. The time has now come where the Devas and the Asuras, they are poised at the ocean of milk, ready to do something. They want to get what they can from this ocean, extract what they can. I want you to go inside there. In, go and manifest yourself there inside that ocean of milk. And then when, when the right time comes, you will emerge from that ocean and declare yourself that you belong to the Deutas and not to the, uh, the Asur, to, to, to the demons. So we, what we have to understand from this, from this shloka what, that we just read, Lakshmi was not born from the ocean. She manifests in the ocean and then she emerges again. The Deutas are not born. The Deutas do not have to be born. The Deutas exist from time immemorial. There is no beginning date you can put to them. No beginning nor end. If you turn to the pages of Ramayan, and I'm not going to sing the Chaufai right now, but when Shankar Bhagavan and Gauri Mata, when they got married, when was their Vivaha Sanskar, it is said that they did Ganesh Puja. In, in, in Bhagavan it is there. And Goswami Tulsi Das himself even acknowledged in, in the Ramayana that you know this will confuse some people because if Shankar Bhagavan, Gauri Mata and Parvati Maha are not married yet, Ganesh Bhagavan is not supposed to warn yet. So how can they be doing his puja and they're not, they, they're not even married yet? Well the answer that Goswami Tulsi Das gives is the same thing that we're discussing here. The Devutas do not have to be born. They exist already. Ganesh Bhagavan already exists. When we say that he is a son of Shankar Bhagavan and Parvati Maha, we mean that he is a combination of their qualities. That's essentially what that means. So Lakshmi Maha did not have to be born from any ocean of milk. She exists. What she represents already exists from the beginning of, of, of creation. Then there is no date you can put that she suddenly appeared. So, Going back to what is being said here, Bhagavan Vishnu told her that you must go, go and manifest in that ocean and then at the right time you come out. Now when is the right time for her to emerge? We'll hear in the next uh, couple of shows.
कराचल पर्वत को मधानी कच्छप को आधार और शेष नाग को मधानी की रस्सी बनाकर समुद्र मंथन किया उसके परिणाम स्वरूप उन्हें धनवंतरी अमृत इच्छे को छवा नामक अश्व अनेक विध रत्न हाथियों के रत्न स्वरूप ऐरावत लक्ष्मी सुदर्शन चक्र और बनमाला आदि प्राप्त हुए so how was it the, the churning of this ocean gone now in order to get anything good out of milk it has to be churned something has to be done with it you cannot just um, let it sit there and expect something to come out of it but the, you know this represents life on the whole a lot of people say you know that bhagwan is supposed to be all giving that if you pray to him and all your prayers are answered and a lot of people think they can just sit down and call upon bhagwan to do something for them and bhagwan will come and walk in front of them and do it so they can sit down it is not the case bhagwan will help us yes but we have to help ourselves first that is the essence of bhagavad gita action on our part if we do not perform an action then nobody else will help us if we cannot help ourselves and we attempt to help ourselves nobody can really help us so what does it mean effort has to be made so that ocean milk was not going to produce anything by itself as i said the devatas and the asuras who are facing each other they now decided that they had to work together so again we see here that in life we often have different purpose from others and then we tend to divide ourselves into you know different groups and say we cannot work with this group all group have to come together and work together the dev even the devtas and the asur could have come together and work together here to do something here what about us human being we are all human being here we are all manushya we are neither devta nor rakshas here we are manushya we, we, we are human and if devta and rakshas were the direct opposite of one another could have come together and work together why can human beings uh, not, not do this also so the devtas in us so the They, they, they realize that they have to work together to get for any of them to get anything out of this ocean now. So Bhagwan Vishnu, who had just come, just sent Mahalakshmi into that ocean, he went to the ocean himself. But which avatar did he take? He had to take an avatar. He could not, in his regular form, he could not do much there. His first avatar he ever took was Matsya, the fish form. You know, fish is the most basic form of life. For since prehistoric time, before dinosaur even, they said fish was already there. And that is why Bhagwan came as a fish first. Matsya Kurma, that's the one now we are referring to, a, 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 as a tortoise or a turtle with a shell on his back. He took that form now and he went to the to, into the ocean, so that a mountain could have been rested on top of his back because he has a shell. It's not going to harm him. And now that the mountain was there on top of the shell, you know the shell is round like this, so the mountain can spin very freely on top of it. And then it is said, said in, the, in these verses that Sheshna, the, 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 the snake that we talk about, that Lord Vishnu rests upon, was used to wrap around this mountain, so that the head was one side and the tail was one side. The devas would pull one way this way, and then the asur, the, the rakshas, would pull the other way. That way the mountain keeps turning and turning, and that is how the goodness came out of that wind. You, you know the process. We, we've seen it uh, before, it, particularly in Brindavan. You know that, that they would do like this. They have the the, the, the stick and the rope and, and the uh, the milk in there, and, and they take everything out like this by, by, by turning like this. Similar process they would do it. So what came out of that ocean now? It is said here. Dhanvantari was one thing. Dhanvantari is a devata of medicine. Now it is good we can call the name of this devata now, because we need this devata. What this world is going through now, we need the blessing of Dhanvantari. So it's very, very good that the shloka call this particular devata name. This devata came out of that ocean. Amrit, Amrit, which is which is a nectar of immortality, also came out as a result of the churning. Anik vidhiratna, all kinds of jewels, natural jewels, 
that are found in the earth all came out and then had you open it Ragnasuru Airavat Airavat is a divine elephant too is a vehicle of Indra Dev uh, this elephant came out then, then Mahalakshmi Ma came out after all these then Mahalakshmi Ma decided that, um, the time was right for her to emerge and declare openly that she is the consort of Mahavishnu Bhagwan and that she is a representative of the Devutas. So when I said when you worship any Devata, any of the Devutas, we are automatically invoking the presence of Mahalakshmi So th th that is what I want everybody to understand very clearly. She emerged from that ocean, yes, but she existed long, uh, long before that. And you know, whenever we turn on the light for the evening, you see all the lights around here? A lot of people say, you know, um, this is an electric light. It's not like we're lighting a dia. This is, all you're doing is pushing a switch on the wall and turning on this light. But the point is, any form of light comes from Mahalakshmi Ma. So when Surya Narayan Bhagavad sets in the evening, you know, other parts of the world, he was still shining. But in all parts of the world, when he goes down and you have to turn on this light now in order to see anything, you are supposed to offer a prayer. It might sound ridiculous how you pray to an electric light bulb on the ceiling, but it's not ridiculous because that is light still and it's only through the grace of Lakshmima that we have it. So I would urge everyone, those who are not already doing it, because I know, I know plenty of people do it, but we should take a resolution on this day of Lakshmi Panchmi, that whenever we switch on our lights in the evening time, let us at least say, Om Lakshmi Karotu Kalyanam Arugyam Sukhasampana Mama Shatru Vinayasaya, Deepa Jyotirinam Vastute. Why that one is appropriate, especially Deepa Jyotirinam Vastute. Because Deep and Jyoti both mean light. We are praising Lakshmi specifically in the form of light. And as I said, it doesn't matter if it's from a dia or the electric bulb. All comes from God. Originally, uh, um, yes, originally and, and essentially. So please do make that a practice every evening. It, it, it is very important that we inculcate these practices in our homes. Now I heard our Reverend Paniji as I as I conclude. I, I didn't actually keep track of my, my time, so <laughs> I didn't know the time I started, so I don't know what time to finish. Paniji will, will, will indicate to me. Now I heard reference that um, yesterday a katha was read about Sitama. And who is Sitama? Sitama is the same Lakshmi we are reading about uh, uh, tonight in a different form. But you know Lakshmi took avatar on this earth many times. Not that one time alone. So now that we explain the very ancient Katha, that, that um, Samudra Mantan, which is a turning of the ocean, is very ancient, ancient, ancient times. Now we're going to go uh, fast forward with into the future on Earth, on this very planet that we live, and see how Lakshmi Ma uh, manifested herself. And this will be the last thing I read about Maha Lakshmi Ma for this evening. Pushat Bhajasya Patni Cha Devi Mala Janma lete hi, ek kanya us kanya ni 
ने विधिवत स्नान किया और तपस्या के लिए वर्ग को प्रस्थान कर दिया यदि अपने सभी लोगों ने श्रीहरि के चिंतन में तत्पर रहने वाली उस कन्या को ऐसा करने से प्रयत्न पूर्वक रोका था दिस पर्टिकुलर फॉर्म ऑफ महालक्ष्मी महाथी And she manifested her birth as a human female. Now, Vedavati was her name in this genre. Vedavati, that would imply that she had the qualities which are described in the Vedas. That is how she acquired that name. As I said in the beginning, name is not given by accident. Name has a lot of significance. Now, Lakshmi, obviously, naturally, that when she When she manifests on Lord, she will have to be connected back to Lord Vishnu again. Automatically, that will happen. But she wanted to demonstrate the importance of doing your own work. As I said in the beginning, not in the beginning, just a few moments ago, we cannot just sit down and expect things to happen. We have to get up and do something ourselves about it. So what did she do now? She said that she wants. She openly declared that Lord Vishnu must be her husband. As I said, it would happen automatically because she is Lakshmi Ma. Originally, she was Lakshmi Ma, but she said, in order to get him, I'm going to perform tapasya. I'm going to go to the and, and bathe in the river and perform tapasya there until I get my wish. So you see here, Lakshmi Ma is described is already demonstrating in the form of Vedavati. That once we come on earth, we have to perform work. Never mind if we think something is going to come to us easy, we still have to to, to put effort into getting what we want and what we need. So Lakshmi described it, and what does Lakshmi represent? Is wealth. All these things that she gives is not going to fall into your lap. We have to get up and do something if we want to acquire her blessings. Now, what is the connection? Huh? I, I made a connection to the Kathar and what was read previously about the abduction of Janaki Ma. What is the connection? What has I got to do with this? Well, we will hear now in these next few stories. Same time, and he sat next to her. 
Well, in fact, in front of her, and asked her the question, who are you? Because he, he, he was so captivated by her, he, had, he, he felt he had to do that. Now, what did he do by, by asking her question? He broke her concentration. Whatever meditation she was doing, he broke her concentration. So, Bhattajano, whenever we know that somebody is engaged in some kind of prayer or, or, or observance of some kind, we must take it upon ourselves not to disturb that individual, not to do anything to disturb that individual. Many times, and I, I, I don't know, but I, I'm sure Padiji will back me up, that sometimes, you know, most people will do things properly. Our community is a very dedicated community. But one, one time you will see certain things happening. And I've seen it that somebody is performing puja here, and the crowd is behind them. And what happened? They, want to, they invited a certain amount of people, and food is being cooked and so on. Well, what will they keep doing? <laughs> they keep watching back, back, back to see what is going on. And worse yet, somebody might come behind them and tap them on the shoulder and, and, and whisper something that has something to start them on back there. <laughs> but the general, these practices are, are, are not, not practices, I shouldn't use that word. These um, incidents are not uh, good things to do with, with, again, with all due respect, I say this. If somebody is in the, the process of performing puja, we must not disturb them, and we must not allow ourselves to be disturbed also. We must not allow our mind to get distracted. So this is what Rahul has done. That's the first thing he has done now. He has broken her concentration. Now she will do her best to ignore him because she is doing the right thing and trying to maintain her level of concentration. And what did Rahul do, do instead? He tried to, when he realized she was not going to interact with him properly, he forcibly grabbed her hand and tried to carry her away. And she told him that I'm going to give up this body right now and I'll be born back instantly. And when I come back again, I am going to, in that genre, not this one body I have now, but the next one, I am going to be the, the, the reason why you, you will be destroyed in the end. So true to her word, she gave up that body and reborn as a baby now. And Rahul said, you know what, this baby is going to cause my death. Let me get rid of her. And, and he threw her into the same river, it is said. That river carried her back onto Dharati Ma, onto the earth. And when Raja Janak was plowing the field in preparation for Yadya, when he made a dent in the ground, that is when Sita Ma appeared. And we all know what happened after that. But essentially, Vedavati and Sita Ma are all Lakshmi Mata. It's all the same Lakshmi Mata. And I'm not going to read any more shloka, but this same chapter which I'm reading from, also says even Draupadi, the wife of the Pandavas, was a representation of Mahalakshmi Ma. And she was still connected with Bhagavan Vishnu because she was a supreme Bhaktini of Lord Krishna when she came uh, upon this earth. So, brave Bhaktajano, we see here Mahalakshmi Ma manifests in many different forms. And the last point, the most important point I want to make is that each one of you ladies of our society, all of the ladies of our society, Lakshima also manifests in you too. As this chapter says, she manifests in many different forms. Each and every one of you represents Lakshima. When we have a wife or a mother in the home, that is the Lakshmi of the home. And you know, in fact, the old custom, when somebody is getting, when a boy and girl is getting married, you know the old custom, I don't see it observed much today, but I'm sure many of you will remember that the, the Dulaha, the boy's mother, does she go to the wedding or not? Really and truly, the Dulaha mother is not supposed to go to the wedding, not supposed to be at that wedding. What is the reason for that? Because Lakshmi Ma is always supposed to be present in the home. While that wedding is going on in the girl's side home, the boy's side home should not be without a Lakshmi. Lakshmi should be shining in both homes at the same time. And that is why the Dulaha's mother remains inside her own home while the wedding is going on that side. That, that, that really is a correct way 
to do it and there's a reason behind it, which I just explained. There's a reason behind it. And if we think about that reason, it is very logical. And we should try, it almost boils down to the fact that every mother, as, and let's go back to what Paniji said earlier too, every mother is a manifestation of Lakshmi Ma. That's what all of this, that's the main point I want to come down to today. That's what all of this boils down to. Now as a conclusion to Katha this evening, I would just like to finish off with the, the very important mantras, the important Veda mantras, just five of them I will read and then I will conclude for this for this evening. Om Hiranyavarna Harinim Swarna As a final word, I thank Paniji for having me here once again, the Etai Shanti Bhavan Mandir, uh, for having me and compliment them for keeping up Navratri and keeping up with the regulations at the same time. And once again, it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank each and every one of you who, although not physically present, are virtually present with us. Without you, uh, this would not have so much meaning as well. Om Shanti, 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 Hari Om Prem Se Bolo Mahalakshmi Mata Ki Jai. Muli Prem Se Bolo Shri Vedyas Maharaj Ki Jai. Thank you very much, Padiji, for such a beautiful katha tonight to bring forth the greatness, the glories, the wonderful teachings of Mahalakshmi Mata. You know, you were talking and you were mentioning about the light and bowing to the light. And you took me back, I would say about 35 years or so, even more probably. I remember I was a little boy growing up. You know, we used to watch when and we used to light the kerosene lamp. And I remember how they used to bow to that lamp, how they used to light it. As soon as they light it, they bow down and they pray. And they, that was the prayer they used to recite to. Lakshmi Karo to Kalyana. So, so many years it took me back, and I'm sure as we were listening to that, we were, we were reminded how important light is. Imagine if you're in a room of darkness, you can't, you, you don't know where you're going. You have to feel, yeah? You have to feel, and, but you find that light, and then you have this vision, you're able to see where you're going. So, Lakshmi is very, very important. And as we were talking here, a very beautiful thought came to my mind. And tell me what you think about it. Our mothers are like real Durgas. Think about it carefully. They brought us into the world. They cared for us and they did everything for us. We get married. We need sustenance now. Mothers aren't there anymore. We need sustenance. We need wealth, comfort, care, love. Who do we turn to? Lakshmi. When we get old now, we need somebody to take care of us. And in order for somebody to take care of us, who do we turn to? Our children. But in order for our children to take care of us, they need education. They need to be successful. And our children, our daughters, children represent who? Saraswati. So this is how we can also look at the spirit of Navratri. It gives us an opportunity to remember our mothers, to love and serve our wives. So you, that was not say wife should serve husband. No, no, no. It should be the other way around. Remember our wives, love our wives, and our children. Most important, 
be there, be by their side, and also love them and care for them. DLS, remember that, DLS, Durga, dedication, devotion, L, Lakshmi, love, S, Saraswati, Shraddha, faith. Where there is devotion, where there is love, where there is faith, God is always present. It is my honor now to have each and every one of you along with all of us to look at the screen where we will, this is the fifth night and who do we surrender to Adi Shakti as? She is called Skandamata. And our Devi who is going to be playing the role tonight is no other than our very own Karina Pasad. And she is going to be described by one of our Naujawanis, Sonia Ram Baran. Jai Sitaram. My name is Sonia Rambran. Today I will be discussing Maskanda Mata. Maskanda Mata is the fifth avatar of Durga Mata, therefore worshipped on the fifth day of Navratri. Let's break down the name of this Devi. So, Skanda is another name for Lord Kartikeya, who is better known as Lord Shiva and Mata Parvati's son, as well as the brother of Ganesha. Mata means mother. Hence, Skanda Mata means mother of Skanda or Kartike. So distinctly, she is another form of Ma Parvati. For devotees who worship Ma Skanda Mata, their blessings are twofold or twice the amount as they are also praying to Lord Kartike who sits on her lap. Goddess Skanda Mata has four arms. In one, she holds a pink lotus flower. In the other, a bell. And her third hand, is positioned in a blessing gesture, and her fourth holds Lord Kartikeya, who resides in her lap. Just as Ma Durga, she too rides a lion. Maskanda Mata blesses her devotees with treasures, power, prosperity, wisdom, and salvation. When praying to Maskanda Mata, you must hold a pure heart and be entirely devoted to her. Maskanda Mata represents significance. Even to the most illiterate soul, Maskanda Mata can grant an ocean of wisdom if they are wholeheartedly devoted and committed to worshipping this goddess. Jai Ho. Jai Ho indeed. Thank you very much to our dear Sonia Ramaran describing the glories of Skanda Mata. And we want to thank our little one dear Karina Pasad for being part and parcel of our Navratri celebration to you and your parents, your family. We want to wish all of you a happy Shubh Navratri 2021. At this time, devotees, it is my honor now to hand over the microphone to Oregon Harvath, and they are going to lead us in the chanting of the Adi Shakti Mahalakshmi Devi Chari. So sit back and listen as we glorify her in these 40 verses. My teaching